It was you, chatters. It was you, you pulling me through. It was you, Lord, it was you, Lord, pulling any true. It was you, it was you, just pulling me through. <laughs> Every situation, it was you. Lord, it was you who just pulling me through. Good morning. When I stumble, when I cry, when I felt like I wanted to die. Oh, when my friends turn and they walked away. You were right here, right here to stay, cause it was you, it was you just pulling me through, hey, Lord, it was you, Lord, it was you pulling me through, good morning, good afternoon, you, Eddie, baby, it was you, Lord, yes, sir. Pulling me through. What's up? What's up? What's up? We're just there to enjoy a little bit of sunlight, you know? A little bit of sunshine, baby. Yes. Have me a cup of coffee, you know, the. I'm out on the land. I'm here enjoy. Hey, listen, life can't nice, see? Eh? I don't know what's wrong with people. Life is nice over here. I know that there's a lot of people yamming yamming themselves over here. You know, look at them yam themselves. Don't war, don't war. Leave them to eat themselves. Some people like <laughs> aki and sabi. Some people like steak. It's all based on what you like, baby. But I'm sitting here and I'm thinking to myself how grateful I am. Um, just so grateful that I have a life. I can breathe. Make me, me can sit down at peace. I'm mean, not at war in my mind. I know there's a lot of war going on, and sometimes we get fight out and all these things. But let me tell you something. Make sure while you're doing what you're doing, you're at peace. If something is bringing you no peace, you gotta make sure you're careful about them. Something there. Eh? Do you understand? Okay. Make sure whatever you choose to do, you make sure you're at peace. Some of y'all got fake peace going on. We don't want a fake peace. Be mindful. Be mindful. In this season, in this time, be mindful of your connectivity. Be mindful of what you entertain. Be mindful of what you're a part of. Some people, you know, they is willing to sell their soul for anything. They're willing to sell their soul for anything. Um, but I always will encourage you guys, never... Never be a part of something because you want clout, you want money, you want notoriety. Because money, clout, notoriety, these things come with a price. And a lot of times people, when they give the clout, they will willing to take it back. Hello. The only person we supposed to focus on building on is God. Because I only person when me sister and turn against you and turn against me. While we're human, I'm a good person, but guess what? All me could have turned against people become a flesh and become a sinner so the potential is there for me to do wrong but God no darling he's holy he's righteous he's good inconsistent he never changed that is why me we always tell tell people God is my hero God is my hero and if I'm a God it's my mother because why and my mother put on nine months of labor for me and push me out I don't run around and admire people and say them are my hero them are my admiration my mother is truly my admiration to life itself how I live, how I choose to move on is the principles that my mother put in me, my likeliness, who I am as a person, the structure that I'm built on is my parents, you understand? And for me, I, it would do them a disservice as well as do me a disservice for me to, you know, present something else. And a lot of people come out here and they are willing to present something else just for the hype of it. So I'll encourage you guys, don't present something that, you know, you're not. You understand? Don't, 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 don't worry about trying to be liked and loved do not present yourself as something that you're not because at the end of the day it's going to come back and go bite you in the backside it is going to bite you in your backside and i don't want that for us 
it just come a point where you have to choose. Now, me see now. So a lot of things I keep, you know. And me I look at me, I pray, and me I say, the liars are gonna be a liar, a wicked are gonna be a wicked. No matter how you see, then go on. Make people are going to be who they are. So you don't invest. Don't invest too much energy into these things, okay? Don't personalize it. Don't make it a problem. Um, you don't have to get close to people. You know, just leave them alone. If your sister their aunt not clean, your sister certain things is not right. Just respect them from a distance. You don't have to malice anybody. You don't have to, you know, have a heart against these people. No, just leave them where they are. It is for your sanity. I may not talk again. I may not say it again. Because people think so we talk in our ear because I mix up they want to hear. But everybody go know say so chicha we ain't ever say things from wapi kill filo 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 come back on kill wapi. I may not change my language. May not put aside my God to please them. May not coming out here and becoming something I'm not to please none of them. Cause at that day we at that day we want. At that day we want. People want to vagina with them for do things. You get beat down all kind of sitting for all kind of sitting. And I'ma tell you something. One thing about me, the reason why people treat me the way they treat me, I because me never confirm to them. Me tell them to me a mangoose. You couldn't get me in a few little corner can you come here you want to show me little love once in a while and you want to go on like a serious chicha. You don't rate me because I know the truth. You can't style me out there. Enough of them only rate me because somebody else call me name. They never rate me and the people that call me name don't rate me. Because the people that call me name, they don't rate me. And you will believe so they rate me because they call your name. So nobody get frightened if somebody call your name. If somebody call your name, you don't know if they even like you. People call your name for certain benefit. Nobody ever get it twisted in their life. Oh, oh. Stay in your lane and stay in your corner. Stay in your lane and stay in your corner. Stay in your lane and stay in your corner. But nobody now want to hear that. Alright. Some of you, you're fighting a battle that is losing. You're fighting a battle that you present yourself to be a winner and you're not, you're a loser. You're fighting a battle that is not beneficial to anything in your life or your spiritual work or anything in your soul. Nothing in your, nothing. But yet you're doing it. Yet you're doing it. Why are we fighting battles that is not worthy for us to fight? It's not for us to fight. We bring down too much problem for ourselves. We bring down too much issues on ourselves. And, and the biggest battle that you and I will fight is the battle in our mind. That's the biggest battle. Because when time people and you not fight, and you get your yard, and you deal with things in your mind, and you can't sleep at night, and that's the biggest battle you have fight. So you don't need to make sure, you need to make sure you're not fighting with people. Fight with yourself. And go fight with God. Because him alone can fix, fix your problem. Him alone can fix my problem. Um, don't look for them. You know, acknowledge you. Don't look for them. Rate you. Don't look for them. Love you. Love yourself. Rate yourself. Acknowledge yourself. And above all things, never let go of a God for people. Friend, family, combo, husband, wife, I don't care. Because you're going to live to regret it. You're going to live to regret. Say, so only I run to God when you want something. And then God's supposed to come through for you when you go through the trial, the man, the wicked thing. Let me tell you something. God is not a fool. I have to stop and style God like God, an idiot. He knows your sins and He knows who you are. Come as you are. And anything you want fixed, and He wants fixed, if your heart is for Him, He'll do so. Alright? Good. Many will not honor God. That is why they're running around honoring people. You don't know who you are. And if you didn't know who you are, you wouldn't have to look for get honored from people because you'd have already stepped into who you are, your purpose, your destiny. That's the way you see so many people are near money in right now. Near money like a hug. Because they don't know who they are. When you know who you is, guess what? Stand on that. It's not because you're perfect. It's not because you're, gonna, you're not going to make mistakes. It's not, it's not because you got it all together. No, it's not. It's because you know that in this life, if you go down that road, you can see what's going to happen. If, in this life, if you go down that road, you can see what happened. And a lot of you, God is showing you. And it's like you don't care, you don't want to know, you don't want to listen. And when time things happen, no, Jesus Christ, God help me, please. And you're crying out. Crying for what, hypocrite? Why are you doing it? You think God is a fool? Come willingly and truthfully. Whatever the issues may be, whatever your struggles is, what, it doesn't matter. I tell people, you can't get me out of my church. Because I don't see no friend when I want them. I don't see no friend when I need them. They, they fix me as much as I love people, I respect people, and I have good people in my life. Guess what? Me not see what one of you can do for Anik. I don't see because when I need you the most, you never know when, I, when to be there for me. So, and I don't even look to people because people like me watch wrong. Nobody never ever feels that we, we need help. 
They won't even look my way. We have to dead and dry up and, and, and in a grave before people come come see me. That's just the truth. That's just the truth. So I've learned to exist in that place, making God my source and understanding how important that is for me because people will disappoint you. And I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm saying. Don't put people in a position of God because every time we get, a, we get a husband, you get a wife, you get a boyfriend, you get a girlfriend, for some reason you feel like they are the one that's supposed to come in and fix you. They are the one that's supposed to come in and soothe your rejection issue. They are the one that's supposed to come in and fix your mental problems. No, darling. Fix yourself before you find a relationship. Stop running to a relationship, not having understanding, not having knowledge, not having wisdom, not, not preparing yourself. Some of you say you want to be a wife, but you won't show yourself to be wifely. You don't even cook a meal. You can't cook a meal. You do nothing. But every day you get up here and tell God, God me want husband, God me want wife, God me want this and God me want that and God and God and God and God. God, me know me, me got the water, me got the well, me got the goody, 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 goody. God don't care about your goody and he make it. What do you have to offer outside of your sex? What you have to offer a woman, a man outside of your sex? Because a lot of you don't understand the value of people. That is why you degrade them. That is why you bring them down and you don't care about people. You understand? Sometimes that's why you see husbands with their wives so terrible and wives with their husbands so terrible. When I look around, we see by internet how people are carrying kind of thorough, thorough, and sneak to this, to the, to their husband, and thorough, give their husband a kind of disease, wife disease, a kind of something. Let me tell you something. And that caused death. It caused death. So me and you know say, and I because we're not grown and we can't do what we want to do, we do what we want to do regardless, but me consider what I do because of the impact that it will have, not just on me, but if I have children, if I have a husband, if I, if I, if you're a man and you're, you have your wife, what you do is impactful. God forbid you went out and you cheated on your wife and brought her a disease and your wife pregnant and guess what, the disease killed the pitney. God forbid, let me tell you, this is the result of sin. It will always be death. What's up out here, baby? It will always be death for you. With a physical death, emotional, mental, and spiritual, most of all. Because when we turn away from God, we're not going to be in the spirit. We're going to the flesh. That means any little thing I do, me, I tore your backside. Nah, 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 nah. Kicking your throat one, one time. Nah. No, God. You understand? We don't consider when we are out of the spirit, man. We don't consider when we're not building the spirit, man. We only consider how you deal with you or you deal with me. I want to encourage you. Let God be your source of conviction. Okay, don't sit down in your life and go on like say you got it all together because we all have problems. We have all done wrong. And for you to sit there and think that your mistakes are supposed to just be held as a secret. No, what are you going to teach your kids? Don't be ashamed of your, your, your mistakes. Don't be ashamed of your testimony. Don't be ashamed of the wrongs they do because they will away the wrong. But the fact is, are you still doing it? The fact is, is that thing still having a hold of you? Is that taking people man and taking people wife is a, is a problem for you? Miss Verna, may I wonder... Because while we are growing, there has to be change. There's no water here. While we are growing, there has to be change. So chit chat, look on ourselves and say, Lord God, so I'm going to see used to do me young. God, I have missed mercy. If I do it now, what a shame and a scandal. You grow from those things. You don't pretend like you didn't make those mistakes. You don't pretend like you didn't make and done the stupid things young people do. But as you grow, I realize if some of these things I had just left it alone, I wouldn't have been in the position I was in. If I had left certain things alone, it may listen. Certain things would have got through. And I that me learn from and may I tell the truth say, me not care what nobody wants to say, me not let go me God for you. Hello. Because some of you know the man and the woman you have in your yard, you think them liar and you know, so then they are rude, them give you the sweet talk. But you said husband, you said wife, you think liar is out there doing things to you and you don't know yet. And the time is coming that if you find out about it, are you able to maintain your peace? The time is coming that if you find your husband in a compromising position, you find your wife in a position, your girlfriend or your boyfriend, and you say, my God, I've been with them for five, six years or ten years or whatever amount of time, and I could never see this coming. Oh, my God, you're going to be so distraught if God is not your source. You, know? you see, if you depend on a man or a woman right through, and I'm not saying your husband and your wife should not be loyal. They shouldn't trust you. You should have all of that in marriage and faithfulness and loyalty, right? However, we know that sin is present in our lives, in our in the land. Temptation is everywhere and it's not like back in the day when women used to hide. No, women are walking out and telling your husband, you are mine now. Mm -hmm. That is how bold women are. As well as men, they'll know you're married and they look and they say, oh, I want this married woman. And they do it with boldness. 
So a lot of people will deliberately chase you out of your relationship. If you're not godly, you will go with it because what's going to happen? The flesh will rise up and you will look at the person and say, well, my wife is older, so she's younger, so guess what? <laughs> Maybe I can taste a little too. My husband is older and this guy around the corner, he's <laughs> he younger, so <laughs> I mean, I can taste a little bit. <laughs> you're not thinking anything of it. You're not thinking the damage it's, that's going to be done. You're just thinking in the flesh, in, your, in yourself. And this is oftentimes what immature people do. People that are spiritually immature as well as regularly immature, just physically, in age or in, in mentality. I've always been on more of the mature side when it comes to like thought process. Because I grew up, you know, as a pastor's kid. So, you know, knowledge of things was appearing to me at, at the earliest stage, you know, and stuff, being spiritually aware and stuff because I had parents that actually lived and walked that lifestyle um, and that lifestyle you know with the Lord you know was started in me through my parents with them depositing good seeds in me them depositing about God Sunday school learning scriptures stuff like that um, what you mean the pop are you saying pastor or post what poster what are you saying repeat that for me um repeat that so I can understand what you're saying okay so I want you to hear me and hear me be encouraged I know sometimes some people are enduring hardship I realize you see this hardship thing it's really contingent upon your heart some of you your pride is is the death of you your pride don't let your pride be the death of you don't let your pride be the death of your relationship okay be humble understand your mate especially if your past okay especially if your mate isn't saved or your mate is saved or you're not it depends on the dynamic that is why that you shouldn't be unequally yoked and it's not just about christianity unequally yoked doesn't mean one a christian and one is not only unequally yoked is also in mentality if we we not take the same we're not upon the same sides of the track we don't we, 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 we you from the east and from the west nothing you believe i believe nothing you go by it's an equal yoke you will you find problem in the relation you you find a place where you it's confusion there's no togetherness you know what i'm saying what about them um what about the pastor you remove your comment but what about it make your make your um your comments um fully legitimate in sentences so i can um answer you properly okay i don't want to misconstrue anything that the supporters are saying all right pastors it doesn't matter if you're a pastor or not a pastor is only a title it is not anything else other than a title just like you would say a father a father's a title a mother's a title um what's your father's name it might be peter what's your mother's name it might be uh, mary you don't know those things are titles so it doesn't matter if your title is pastor missionary deacon or wife husband it, it, the facts still remain if you decide to do things out of God's will and move according to your flesh, there's only one road that leads to for any of us. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what you got. It doesn't matter how spiritually you feel. If you decide to answer your flesh, it is only one result that's going to come. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter what road you take. It's going to take you right back to where you are. And that has to come with intent for us to even try to walk right, to do right, or even work on ourselves. Because some of us, we're horrible. We're horrible. It's just a God-given truth. We're horrible. And we're, 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 we're saying we're Christian or you're in church, but you're horrible. Let's talk about it. You're horrible. And you think you shouldn't work on your attitude. You think you shouldn't work on your unforgiveness. You think you shouldn't. You are horrible. So it takes really um, humility to look in yourself and say, you know, I got a bad attitude and I really need to work on that thing. You know how many things I looked at in myself and I said to myself, I'm so glad I went to school because for what I went to school for, that it made me really change all my I am because I had some little nasty ways about me too I had some little nasty ways about me that I had to adjust okay I'll get to that in a second I am um, I had some nasty things that I had to adjust and I have things in me still that God is adjusting right now so I'm, that's why I always use myself as an example I don't like to play hypocrite stop acting like you don't have an anger problem if you do stop acting like you, 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 you don't have a problem with woman if you do or you have a problem with men if you do be honest and be real so you can get the appropriate and necessary help. Now the pastors, many pastors, you know, depending on who they are, female and male, some of them are out there 
doing all type of mess. And let me tell you something, it is unacceptable. But let me tell you something, when God is ready to judge this, uh, this land here, garden, let me tell you something. When God judges us, because you and I can put the judgment by our mouth. Going to church, you can't turn up and go on with yourself if you ain't want to. But even that would have been out of order. Because God watches what you do, not what the next man do. God watches what him do, not you that watch him what him do. And this is important because I understand what you're saying, Garden, and I get it completely. As a pastor, kid, I grew up in the church. I've seen many things, good, bad, and indifferent. So I will never speak ill of the church because the church was made by God to be perfect in his will. However, when you're in the church, guess who's in the church with us? Human beings. Sinners. Sinners. So what is your expectations of people who come to God that are immature? People who come to God that doesn't know his spirit or has his spirit. You're going to see some sin activities. You're going to see people come up in church and do all type of stuff. And then you have those people who take advantage of the grace of God. They just live all they want to live. Nobody cares. So I'm going to do me. So if me take one, one young girl in the church and you take one two young girls in the church and you know all of a sudden you take ten young girls in the church. Because you got comfortably in your sin. And I promise you, pastors like that they never escape God's wrath. So don't you worry, Garden, about stuff like that. It's not don't let it be your concern. Let it be something that you put before God in prayer. Because the next thing we have to start doing is, as the people of God, we have to have the right mindset. You have to remember where you was. And a lot of you that are delivered now, you used to take people, man, right through. You used to take their husband. You used to sleep with people's husband. Mm -hmm. You used to sleep with people's wives. And now God delivers you and you are a holy person now, which is good. However, remember where you're coming from because people like you God still needs to bring out the rest of them that are still stuck under somebody's bed they're still stuck in somebody's house with somebody's husband and they don't know how to get out because they're dealing with some inner issues that says insecurity that says all I've learned is saw my mama my uncle my aunt everybody taking people husband and I never felt worthy enough to got my to have my own so you have to look at a broader picture as how a person was raised up, what principles they were taught, and are they godly people? Do you expect godly things from people that are unsaved? No. You're delusional if you think you're supposed to expect those things, right? Open your mind and use things from a mature perspective in our thought process. It has to be different because if you get up every day, you go to church and you're looking at people and saying, "Well, the pastor taking this one, the, the, the missionary taking this one." What are you doing? Are you praying and fasting for the missionary? Are you praying and fasting for the pastor that you're still sitting in the pew playing hypocrite with? This is what I'm saying. God will judge you too. He will judge me, he will judge you, and he's going to judge them. No man going to escape. Even the man that is six feet under, that's buried, he will be judged too. So don't take God's job in your hand or in your mind because you go crazy. Put your problems on his shoulder. He is a burden bearer. And if you dare pick it up, I promise you, that burden will kill you emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. And some of you physically because the hypertension come after the stress. The heart attack and the stroke come after the stress. And every other thing there is that is um, equated to stress in your body. We got immune issues that are what? Created by stress. So first of all, the devil wants to kill you and die physically so if you stress us out with everything that we are so concerned about that we are not giving to God we are not trusting God and we are just taking it up like King Kong I'm going to handle my whole life I don't need God I don't need God who is God God can't understand God and you get this cockiness like you're the one who wakes yourself up every day like you have the ability to breathe breath into your own body even when you have cursed the king he has seen fit because he knows you're a fool without knowledge. Look how God good to us. He knows you and I are stupid now. Sometimes we're immature now. And God is like, you're a fool, you're a child. It's like you look at your little child and they, they go drink dirty water. And you say, oh my God, why are you drinking dirty water? That's a child they don't understand. So that is how God is with us. He sees us doing some stupid thing. You sleep with people's husband and you think God don't see you. You're taking over there, beating on your girl, beating on your husband, doing whatever you're doing, and you think God don't see you. And when he puts his wrath on us, then we will never be able to escape it. Never be able to escape it. All right? Be encouraged to be a decent human being, first and foremost. But for you to even walk righteously in any way, you need God. 
you and I are sinners by nature. That means we're gonna we're gonna handle situations in an emotional manner. We're going to handle what we are doing emotionally and naturally. That is why the Bible talks about being transformed by the renewing of your mind. God knows that our sinful mindset, we're naturally going to cuss somebody out. If you come for me, I'm going to let you have it. If you come for me, I'm going to bust you in the head. These type of thoughts are naturally a part of who we are. God would have never encouraged you to transition your thought if he knew it wasn't good. The only way you go from being a retaliator to be somebody like where you just don't retaliate anymore, it takes some serious God. Because you don't just get from A to Z overnight. Bernie's baby, how are you? It do, you don't. You do not. It takes work. And my sister up there, shout out to Bernice, who's been through a lot and shared her story on the internet about lupus and all the things. And I'm just so elated to know and see another woman that God has brought through a process. God has brought this woman, Bernice, through a process. And sometimes you see people on the internet, you never know. But whenever you're in your part and your low place, you will realize God the most when people disappear out of your lives. When friends are nowhere to be found. Partners, your wife, your husband, your girlfriend, your boyfriend. Even sometimes you're going through and your children don't even understand what you're facing. But when God gets a hold of you and you got to realize that he loves you and he's there for you, there's no more worrying. While stress is around, it will always be until the end. When you're, no, when you're learning how to place your burdens on God, it hits different. You no longer get crazy about the things you used to get crazy about. You no longer partake in certain things you used to partake in. You just no longer do the same things. So I want to encourage you. Don't beat on yourself for where you've been. I want you to find hope in your experience and your mistakes. And don't be silent to share where you've been. Because somebody out there truly can benefit from you guys i just wanted to come and give you guys a simple encouragement this morning this is your girl any and it is chit chat tv because over here we have the hot talk real talk conversations now if you don't watch me on youtube or you don't have me on youtube please get sure to go ahead and subscribe to us there remember no matter how life set don't let go of your god to please them to please them goodbye i love you guys i'm enjoying the weather out here you know look at it I'm enjoying the weather out here. You know, I'm down in Florida right now. Just having a chill moment, chill time. Alright? So big up all my clean and nice skin supporters. Alright? I love you guys. We'll talk later.